Since 2007, as part of its inspection regime, Ofsted has evaluated how schools tackle community cohesion, and it's a factor in the school's rating. It's a tricky area to get right, and it's about much more than just race. People have struggled to know what it means, and we've had to think uh, carefully, what, what does that mean? Community cohesion is definitely not just about race and ethnicity, it's really about all families of all different socioeconomic groups, of all life circumstances, feeling that a cohesive society is one where everybody feels included. A primary school in Bradford and a secondary school in Oldham have both won praise for their approaches. Community cohesion at Ollerton Primary School is very much the lifeblood of the school. A large, multi-faith, multicultural school on the outskirts of the inner city uh, at Bradford and we serve many diverse communities. I have a very strong belief that community cohesion and pupil achievement is um, linked, completely linked. And so over the last maybe 10 years, we've worked very hard as a school to, to work together to, so that we have a shared belief that in coming together as communities, then our children will ultimately achieve as a result of our work. But this hasn't been easy, as during this same period, the school's population has changed dramatically. 430 pupils are currently on roll. Ten years ago, the figure was half that. 14 different ethnic groups are now represented. Previously, there were just three. A lot of the work that we do is about breaking down barriers so that um, parents and, uh, and visitors enter the school and they feel immediately that they're welcomed and that they, they are being valued. Are you going to be coming in later? Yes. Yeah, that's lovely. OK, so we'll see you later on today. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. To encourage parents to mix and get on with each other, the school regularly invites them to support their children in craft sessions. When my eldest first came to school, obviously, because I'd spent all my time with them at home, I was really nervous when they first came to school, but straight away, they're so welcoming, they've got an open-door policy where I can come in at any time. They're always um, telling us what, what they're doing, it, trying to involve us, and it, it just came really easily then. I felt so comfortable straight away. I think if the children see that the parents are making an effort to work together and the teachers and parents are working together, then they're going to think, well, they're going to follow by example. They're obviously um, educating the parents as well by coming in as well, breaking down barriers that they have got, if parents do have any barriers, because obviously it's not just cultural, it's social backgrounds as well. And um, by that they build confidence up, they can work with their children together and integrate together and move forward and help in their education. The school is also keen to be visible within the wider community. OK, so let's just do that again. I want to be there. I want to be the fastest. I want to win. I want to be the best. I want to be Every half term, members of local faith and educational partnerships are invited in to help deliver a multi-faith assembly. Warm welcome, Jean. Thank Warm you. Warm welcome. So, why are you dressed like that this morning? Well, you see, I never liked sport when I was young. No, no not no, everybody no, does. No. Not everybody does. I come from House Royal Methodist Church and I've been coming with my husband to this school to do assemblies for about 12 years. It's very important that the school recognises the wider community and gets involved with the wider community. But also it's important as the children grow up and with this cohesion we have in the school that they take this into their life in the community. We're learning in Bradford to come together and we're moving in a lot of ways. But there's a lot to be done in local communities and this kind of thing this involvement is doing a lot towards it. Thank you. Let's give them a big clap, these two. Today, the school's lead teacher for community cohesion is planning a lesson, which has been developed with the help of the school's linking network, a body which promotes good practice in community cohesion within and between schools. The lesson we're doing today is based on community cohesion and looking at the children just having a real good chance to think about how would you talk about your own identity and um, talk to somebody else about their identity. If we yeah. ask the children to, yeah. to think of a visible difference rather different. than us giving mm. them it. Yeah. yeah. Place of birth is interesting for you too, Place isn't it? Place of birth, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's, yeah, is that a bit 
contrived if we bring that up or do you think we should just... It's just true, isn't it? Have... Well, it's just true. Training for all the staff has been a key part of our community cohesion development in school. And Meg, as lead teacher, has worked alongside the teachers and also supported the teaching assistants on a weekly basis, uh, looking at their planning with them, uh, coaching them alongside in the classroom. I think, Mrs Khan, you were born in Afghanistan. Wrong. <laughs> I think you were born in Bradford. Wrong. Really? <laughs> My family is from Afghanistan. I was born in Bradford at the Bradford Royal Infirmary. <laughs> so you, you're not from Bradford? Although my family all live around Bradford and I'm from Bradford, I was actually born in somewhere called Horsforth, which is nearer to Leeds, I guess, than Bradford, isn't it? Well, that just shows, doesn't it? We shouldn't make assumptions. Talking about identity can start to raise sensitive issues, so it's not always an easy subject um, to approach. Planning together starts to bring out things that um, like I wasn't sure about whether we should say we, we've got different coloured skin. Yeah. Um, whether you know that's too obvious and whether you, you should sort of skirt around that. Yeah. But you know when we discuss it together, then those kind of things we, you know we get over, don't we? Get we get over them very quickly. And then, we find yeah. usually that the children deal with them really well. The children deal with it better. For them, it's just an obvious question. Yeah. You know, I'm black, you're white, you have black hair, I have brown hair, blonde hair. It's, yeah. it's simp as simple as yeah. that for them, for some of them. We have moved from a position of achievement being satisfactory to it now being outstanding. And this really is because of the work that we've done on community cohesion and developing the ethos of the school so that everyone feels a sense of belonging, but also a belief that they can achieve. Under the new Ofsted inspection framework, secondary schools also have a commitment to community cohesion. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Sambonani. Hola. Assalamu alaikum. Strastwiti. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Breeze Hill School. I've been at Breeze Hill School for 15 years. When I first came here, yeah, the ethnic makeup of the school was different. Um, it, it was probably about um, a, a third of the community were ethnic minority, and of course that's up to 90 odd percent now. But more than that, as an institution, it had no confidence. The staff, for instance, weren't even confident enough to let children be together in a big hall to do exams. We can't do that. We can't let our children out of the building to go on visits to places. They won't behave properly. And one of the things that the, the head and the team he assembled has, has done has provided an increasingly wide range of contexts in which children can mix with other cultures and actually develop some confidence in themselves. To help create a cohesive environment from the beginning, the school focuses heavily on supporting Year 7 students through the transition process. On entry, our pupils have very low ability, you know, the top, bottom two, three percent in the country. And that was causing us, obviously, issues about attainment later on. We were also having issues because our primary schools were segregated, all white or all Asian, that students were not used to working with each other. Now, you put those two things together and you have quite a difficult start to the secondary school. We tackled it as a, in a holistic way, really. We, we regrouped our Year 7s into one building to give them a, a, a better pastoral start to their school. We were able then to put the academic support in around language and, and numeracy and so on. But we put a lot of time and effort also into mixing the students at primary school. Year 7 students Metab and Zach met in Year 6 when their different primary schools came together for a drumming competition run by Breeze Hill School. What happened was when, when we were rehearsing, all loads of people got together and we were in one group. So by that, we, were just, we just became friends and we were just talking to each other. And then we found out that we were coming to the same secondary school. So we, we, we were happy. Yeah, we all get along together. We all we're all friends now, basically. And there, there's people from different different groups, and we all just normally come together. 
New students arriving in later years are also supported by specially trained student volunteers. You know, we had a new student last week um, who, who arrived from Pakistan. Um, we've got another new student this week who I'd like you to show around the library in a minute. Um, but can you just tell me how it's gone with the girl from last week? Have you had any problems yourselves? It's going all right now, but yeah, we did have difficulties with it because like, she wasn't that familiar with school and she didn't know what was going on around and so like it was a bit of a hard time for oh, us. Okay, and, and how have you managed that yourself? How have you been able to deal with that? Well, by helping her around, showing her to lessons, taking her out with us. When I was new, I didn't know anything around here and like I was totally lost and just didn't have no clues what's going on and like when you've got someone who can help you, it makes life easier for you so you know someone's there to help you and to support you all the time. Do you like this one? English. When I was younger, I've moved loads of times primary schools, and I know what it's like to try and fit in. And like, if like you just have one friend there supporting you all the way through, then that's just like who you're gonna trying to be. Be like one friend, and then create it into more. Because students who come new, because they've got like people like us supporting them, and like we've got other students who support them. They feel safer and more confident, so whatever they want to achieve, they go for it. I'm not ready to card this, like I'm not ready. I'm not ready to card this, not ready. What's your name? Sana. Sana, you want to spell that? S E N E. If you look at the duty to promote community cohesion in schools, one of the aspects that schools find very difficult is the knowing your community and being involved with your community. We've got a, a good way into that, which is our grow your own policy with, with staff. It's about encouraging young people and older people who want to get school experience to come in on a voluntary basis initially. These are people who live in this community, whether that's the white community, the Pakistani community, the Bangladeshi community or the, or the new arrivals community. And what we promise all of them is, you know, if they will come in and do some volunteer work, we'll give them opportunities, we'll provide references for the work they've done, but we'll also give them access to any training that takes place. And for many of them, that's got them on a ladder of, of moving through. Dave Hibbert is one example. Living just around the corner from the school, Dave heard about the voluntary placements being offered, applied, and now he's working as a teaching assistant. There are people like Dave who you know, came to me about 12 months ago looking for some volunteer work, and we've now got him, he's got a temporary appointment, and hopefully we'll, you know, if we can't provide it, somebody will provide that as a, as a permanent. But having people like that is a real asset in the school because they live in the, in the neighbourhood, they keep us informed about the neighbourhood and the issues and what the school's reputation is like, and so we don't lose a grip on our community. They can be a, a leeway, they could be a way that we get into the community to get messages backwards and forwards, and they can disabuse some of the myths that run around schools because neighbours often build up ideas about what it's like in a particular school, and having people who live in the community can really help with that. While it can seem a challenge, cohesion, it's actually about the way you work, it's about your ethos, the, the way in which you expect people to work, the values of the school, and it then doesn't become a chore, it then doesn't become something you're doing for Ofsted. It's, it's, it's embedded in the way that you, you carry out the work of the school.